the person sitting just next to me is Yon and I am Yon Lobas. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we are some kind of mavericks, I uh, intend to uh, call this uh, uh, Rogue One a preservation story. And then I, I heard about some unknown movie which who has a very similar name. So please don't tell um, Disney. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, we will present uh, our uh, organization as mm -hmm. it is quite different uh, compared to the other uh, organization that are in, in, involved in this uh, summit. And um, well, we are not only uh, preserving uh, video games and demos, but as it is something that is very specific to us, we will present what we uh, what is uh, this specific uh, subject and then we will present uh, the way we preserve uh, such uh, software uh, and the different tools we have made to uh, to ensure this preservation so first let's talk about uh, our organization uh, so it's very french as M the mo5 mo5 is a very specific french computer uh, and so, uh, and the name of our organization, uh, as Philips is a creator of mm -hmm. the uh, organization. Founder and president, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yuan. Um, yes, we, MO5 was created in 2003 and uh, as a non-profit uh, organization, association by the French law, uh, which aims uh, to, uh, to help to build on the national soil, uh, a national museum dedicated to digital patrimony to our digital heritage that involved mainly everything, in fact, about software preservation, hardware preservation, uh, people involved, experiences from the, from the people themselves, uh, experiences they got when they were young, when uh, the first microcomputers went into the market, uh, when uh, the first video games console as well, et cetera, et cetera. And for this, um, I, I could say that we are nearly uh, 20 years old now, and uh, in two, 2023, uh, we will be uh, 20, 20 years old, and I think it will be a good, uh, <laughs> a good anniversary. And um, I could say since our beginning, uh, we collected a lot, a lot, a lot of items uh, dedicated to this digital patrimony. That, include, uh, that includes, of course, hardware, uh, such as... Uh, the same yeah, microcomputers, console, etc., and and softwares, um, every form that you can possibly imagine, uh, every uh, documentation, uh, document, paper document, uh, uh, everything that is related, in fact, at uh, the age of uh, since the seventies, in fact, when uh, the electronic devices and then digital devices came into the market, everything. Worldwide, of course. All right. So, this is the specificity of our organization. So, uh, MO5.com <laughs> is not uh, is not a scholar organization. Well, not yet. It's part of <laughs> it's part of, part of the goals I have with, with it. So, it's a, li a little different to the other organization that are involved in this uh, meeting, but still. We think we have something to show you, mm -hmm. uh, and and so well. Let, let's talk about um, the um, the specific softwares we will be talking just now. So uh, we will present the way we preserve video games and demos. Uh, and actually, as far as we know, there's no consensual definition of this. But well, at least these are some pieces of software. And they can be very specific to the hardware uh, that should uh, run them. Uh, just let's say that these piece of software have no utilitarian purpose mm. and self-contained. That is, the software itself is its own purpose. I, I think it's important to, to describe what is a demo, maybe for some people that don't know about it. Yes, uh, so video games, Everyone uh, I've heard okay. about this. <laughs> we guess uh, a demo uh, is a so it's a piece of software. It's also some kind of an art form, and the the purpose is to show the capabilities of the hardware 
Mm -hmm. and the capabilities of the people who made the demo. So usually when you look at it, it's some kind of a short movie. Mm -hmm. But in fact, uh, the movie is uh, made in real time by real the computer. Mm -hmm. it, it can show very, 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 very many things. So uh, we cannot just say uh, it will always look like this, but still it's something that run on, runs on the computer and show what you can do with this computer. Mm -hmm. Uh, and just like uh, we said, it implies the use of several art forms, at least visual arts and music. It means when you want to preserve them, uh, you will not only have to preserve the code, but also all the artwork that has been made uh, we, uh, to, uh, to make this software piece of software mm -hmm. possible. What we call the assets. The assets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, video games are highly interactive when uh, the most and as we, we just said, and to when show are, are not <laughs> <laughs> well, not, not, sure. not that yeah. much. Mm -hmm. uh, right, so this is what we will be talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, the first steps uh, when we preserve uh, this software is to make data binary backups. So why we do this? The first thing is data support lifetime is limited. What, uh, how, um, however you are good, you will preserve it sooner or later. We will not be able to use the data support anymore. Also, especially with video games, there's some planned obsolescence and digital right management, which make the use of uh, the software quite difficult. Mm. So we, we need several steps to be able to use the software uh, in a preserved form. And so we need first to have a DD, uh, data bin binary uh, imprint to be able to, uh, to make our, uh, the, the, uh, to do the full process uh, for, for the preservation. Uh, also, these data binary backups is a good way to drastically extend the data li uh, lifetime. And hence, we uh, had some need to create some specific methodology and tools to achieve this purpose. So here is one tool uh, that has been made by one of our members, uh, Jean-Francois Del Nero. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Pauline, and it's, uh, it's a piece of hardware which uh, help us to take the, 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 floppy, data, disk. the floppy disk yes, mm -hmm. and uh, get some uh, data binary backup. Uh, Maybe we, we can show very, uh, very fast how it works. All right. The next slide. Yes. So you have Pauline here by the center. It's uh, some kind of hardware made from uh, FPGA technology. We will come back to, uh, to FPGA uh, technology because it's, I think, we think that is very important. And uh, simply by the left, you have two connected floppies, floppy disk reader, in fact. Uh, original ones uh, able to read uh, whatever the format of the, of the floppy disk. <laughs> and uh, the, the fact is, Pauline is uh, in fact one, one kind of autonomous tool to, uh, to, uh, to make us able to preserve floppy disk. Because before Pauline, there were some, uh, some other tools like, uh, what's the name? <laughs> Perflux. Yes, Perflux was a tool made by a community of people uh, who loved the, the Commodore Amiga, for example, uh, a microcomputer from the 90s. And, uh, but Pauline is, uh, is totally autonomous. And so it, it can read uh, mainly every floppy disk made in the world now and made a binary image uh, very near of the hardware of the floppy disk itself. So it can be read uh, uh, once back into a, a real hardware or into an emulator, things that we, we will discuss a bit later. So we are, uh, we are very committed to the community with the Pauline tool, and uh, it has been uh, adopted by the National Library of Japan since uh, two, two months now. So I think, it has a, a brilliant uh, future. Future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
We think so. And so the polling can be uh, uh, connected to the, the network. And so we can uh, then uh, spread uh, the binary uh, in our... Uh, to, uh, to a NAS, to a PC, to whatever, uh, the, the modern, modern architecture uh, machine, yes. Okay. So this is the, the, the first steps uh, in the preservation process, well, in our preservation process anyway. And one important step, uh, it's kind of uh, the, um, uh, what made first uh, our organization, uh, it's preserving the hardware. Uh, me, uh, when we say preserving the hardware, is preserving it, it, preserving it excuse me, <laughs> in a working state. And as much as possible, we are preserving the support of the software programs. Even so, uh, well, we just uh, talk about this. Ah, you, you just add the, the website from. Yes. <laughs> for example, thank you very much <laughs> to support us with the micro and micro N campaign. Yes. In fact, you are you have shown here the first microcomputer of the world. It's a French invention made in uh, 1972 by a French engineer, uh, Jean, Jean, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. A very great French engineer. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a surprise. So in fact, we, uh, you have from uh, when, we show this hardware, this bit of hardware, the first micro computer of the world. You have in the world only five items like this. Five, uh, five items like the Merkel N, and we have the first, the only one, in fact, in working state that, that can use all the all softwares, of course, and uh, on, and uh, we can make, of course, new software on it, yes. like Portage and. We're making software and so on. So I put the, uh, I gave uh, the, the URL. François Gernel. François Gernel. Uh, uh, you can see the uh, URL of uh, our campaign to get some money because right now, we, mm -hmm. we uh, just a little bit short, not much, but a little bit short. So this micro actually doesn't entirely belongs to us, well, to, uh, uh, to our, our organization. Now, so if you if you can, can give us uh, five ten euros, don't hesitate. <laughs> if you can help, that will be great. So. Uh, and uh, by preserving uh, such hardware, uh, we are ensuring to have exactly the same experience mm. as when it, uh, the software has been originally released, as it runs exactly on the uh, hardware. It on the same hardware, absolutely yes. However, no matter how well preserved the hardware will eventually fail. So then we have a second solution. Antoine. Antoine. <laughs> so Antoine um, and two of our members, Antoine Berkovici, with, uh, who's coming, and Arthur Doza, are making a brand new Apple One using actual original design. So. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah. It's okay. So, yeah, it's so the the motherboard you, you see here is brand new. Actually, it's not finished, but still, it's exactly the same uh, motherboard as if you ju just bought a brand new mm. uh, uh, Apple One back in 1975. It has been reversed Six. because of the preservation of both all the schematics but also because people were scanning the board layout so we could introduce the board layout. And also right now the board is dead because it has no software, but that has all been preserved and we're gonna put software in the ROM and then mm. back into the, the computer to run basic and all the- And made a new software for it. And also we can make new software and make it go online. But and don't we, want to can we clone Doom? Um, <laughs> we can try. We can try, okay. We're we having it on the internet for the next uh, Zoom session. <laughs> Maybe you can move yeah. from there. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Everyone. We have to speed up. <laughs> uh, all right. So this is uh, one of our ways uh, of preservation. 
the, the next way to preserve is to do some Hawaii emulation. So we have talked about FPGA, that is yes. some programmable logic device that can reproduce how the original platform worked. Mm. So it's a way to uh, emulate uh, the old hardware on something newer, and then you uh, you have a very, very accurate uh, emulation. Mm. So, so that you can understand in one chip uh, called the FPGA, that's the name of this technology, you can reproduce exactly uh, an entire machine an entire uh, video game console or microcomputer, something uh, very uh, complicated with a lot of different chips, everything could be melted into one chip. Uh, right. Uh, the next one, we just mm -hmm. pass it. Everyone knows here what software emulation is. Uh, let's say it's, it's some tools we use. Uh, it's, a, it's something useful still. Uh, we do not think that's the only way. Uh, the problem being that software emulation, emulation tends to be less precise than hardware emulation. Mm. And you lose context uh, within the use, the use of uh, the old system, the old video games or software themselves, as you can see on this picture. Uh, so one other way to preserve the software uh, we are doing is to remake them. So we get the assets, we talked about it uh, earlier, and then we use them to reproduce exactly the way the, the software uh, used to, uh, to run. And, and then you, you can use it exactly the way it has been, uh, when it has been released, but on a new- On, on a newer machine. Machines. Yeah. And uh, uh, the way we are doing it is to make them uh, capable to run on even future ma machines. Uh, all right, I, I had a presentation of uh, another world, but- Maybe you can show people uh, after. After, after because we, we're a bit late. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, go on, go on. Okay. And also, all right, uh, good, we have some- Very fast, maybe on, on this film, right. because- yes. uh, So we have some uh, preservation uh, procedures. So it's good, we have pres uh, preserved some items, but now, uh, what do we do with these uh, items? So we are you know, gathering them, and one important thing is to get some documentation and be able to know where this hardware and the documentation is and to be able to uh, share this mm -hmm. with others. And uh, we, uh, we, have, uh, been, well, we have been making some searches of software that can help us to do so. And there were, weren't any software that mm -hmm. are doing this. So we are starting uh, some work uh, for inventory system and to share uh, information. And so we are creating some uh, taxonomy, data model, uh, co communication protocol, and some uh, software tools to uh, make us able to, uh, to inventory our uh, collection and for others to inventory share. their yeah. co collection and to share all the knowledge with with other others and so, the two and the tools themselves yeah yes yeah. so one minute we, we hope you you, you can help, help us with this and we hope we, we will be able to talk to you about this uh, a bit later mm. so just jump to the conclusion <laughs> um so as uh, as you've seen we have already tested and formalized several methodology and tools mm. methodologies and tools and we have an extensive experience in the hardware rejuvenation. <laughs> uh, this uh, help, help us to, to contribute in extending software preservation methodologies. Also, we are part of an international network of digital heritage stakeholders. And actually being here for us is very important mm -hmm. as it is a way to be part of uh, th this uh, network. Yes. And we are developing some tools uh, uh, to, uh, to this aim. And our perspective is first sharing our knowledge. So we have a website, I gave you the URL. We are sharing several software. So we are also uh, so something on GitHub, as you can see. Uh, one step important for us mm -hmm. is to get involved in software heritage and software so, stories. We are talking mm -hmm. with um, Roberto with, uh, mm -hmm. and with Mohan uh, to do so. Uh, we are start. Uh, we hope to uh, get more institutionally impl implied, so uh, to become some kind of institution. And anyway, we are. Uh, we already have several worldwide collaboration. We mm, we are well, trying to make them 
more important. And one uh, uh, collab uh, international collaboration we are uh, mm -hmm. part of is uh, the EFG EFGM, EFGM mm -hmm. uh, which is a way to provide some recognition to this cultural practice, so uh, video games and demos. And uh, this had led us to uh, enlist to the demo scene, so demos, as a UNESCO intangible world cultural heritage. All right. So thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>